Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you some really great breakfast ideas. I hope you stick around to the end because my favorite two recipes are definitely at the end of this video. I hope you enjoy them just as much as we do. First up today we're making these no bake peanut butter cereal bars. To begin, I'm just going to go ahead and take some foil and line my glass dish with it. This is probably an 8x8 or 9x9. I can never remember. Either way, it's a small square size glass dish. Over to a pot on my stove, I'm adding about 3 fourths a cup of smooth peanut butter. If you like chunky peanut butter, you can also use that one, but I'm not really a big fan of that. So today we're just using smooth. I'm also going to add about a half cup of honey. You'll see me switch bottles, that's just because one ran out, so I had to open a new bottle. Once you have both those in your pan, you're going to go ahead and just continuously stir around your peanut butter and your honey until they are mixed together really well and have thinned out a bit. At this point, you're going to dump in about three cups of Cheerios. I'm not even using the name brand Cheerios. I'm using the off brand. They work just as well. This whole recipe just reminds me of Rice Krispie Treats. It's very similar. Once I get those mixed together, I'm going to add them over into my dish. I did not spray it or anything. The foil will come right off, so you don't have to worry about that. Once I get it all in there, I'm just going to smooth it over with my spatula a little bit. And then I let these sit on my counter for about 10 minutes before taking them over to my refrigerator. And then I let them sit in the refrigerator for about another half hour. I ended up getting busy so these sat in the fridge for more like an hour and at this point as you can see the foil comes right off of there. They're still really cold so you can go ahead and use your knife and cut those into the size that you want them. I just cut them into 8 pieces. And then this is what they look like after you cut them. After taking this video, I went ahead and just wrapped each one of these up individually in some plastic wrap and stuck them in my refrigerator and we just ate on them throughout the week. Next, we're going to go ahead and make this delicious cheesy hash brown casserole. I have made this numerous times. You're going to have to preheat your oven to 375 degrees and then chop up a half of a yellow onion, half of a red bell pepper, and half of a green bell pepper. Obviously you're not using the whole pepper so what I like to do is I will go ahead and chop the rest of those up and then I just add those into a freezer bag and I can use them whenever I need peppers in a recipe. Over to my skillet, I'm adding in one pound of this Jimmy Dean hot sausage. If you do not want to use hot sausage, it is totally fine to just use regular, but we actually used the hot sausage one time and ended up liking it better just because it adds a little bit of extra heat in there. After I get that broke up just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and add in my peppers and onion and let this all cook together. I think it's way more flavorful if you just go ahead and cook it like this from the start. Once your sausage is cooked all the way through, go ahead and drain off any grease you might have. Now over to this large bowl, I have about 20 ounces of shredded hash browns that have thawed. I just let them sit out about an hour before starting my meal. Go ahead and add your sausage, your peppers and onion and give this a really good mix. At this point, you should also add one cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese, and I absolutely forgot to do that, so I ended up adding it on the top and then just had a lot of cheese on top, but don't forget your cheese at this step. You will also want to add in some seasonings. I'm adding about one teaspoon of Italian seasoning, a half teaspoon of paprika, a half teaspoon of salt, and about a fourth teaspoon of pepper. You can give this a little taste at this point if you want to, and decide whether or not you think it needs a little bit more salt or pepper. Mm -hmm. 
I went ahead and sprayed down my 9 by 13 casserole dish and then added my shredded hash brown sausage and peppers in there. Like I said, this should have cheese in there. Don't forget that step like I did. This is what happens when you are in a hurry, you forget things. Once you've got that spread out in your pan, I'm just gonna reuse the bowl that we use for this sausage and hash browns. It's all gonna be together anyways. I'm cracking in seven eggs in here. I'm going to add one and one fourth cups of half and half and then get that whisked together. You can now just pour that entire bowl of milk and eggs over top of your hash browns. Make sure you pour it evenly throughout. On top, you'll wanna add one cup of sharp cheddar cheese. But like I said, since I forgot to add the cheese in there, I just went ahead and used all of that cheese right on top. Next, I'm gonna cover this with some foil. I did spray my foil down with some nonstick spray just so my cheese would not stick to it. And this is going in the oven for about 50 to 60 minutes or until your eggs have set. About 10 minutes before taking it out of the oven, I did remove the foil just so the cheese could melt a little better on the top. And then this is what it looked like coming out of the oven. I enjoy topping mine with some salsa. And then this is what the casserole will look like in your bowl or your plate. I've made this many times. We both really love it. It is a lot cheesier and there will definitely be a better cheese pull if you add the cheese into the hash browns, but that's okay. It was still delicious this way. Now we're going to make these breakfast blueberry cake bars. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees and then over to my mixing bowl, I'm adding in one stick of room temperature butter. I'm also adding in some lemon zest. This is from about half of a lemon. And then I'm gonna mix these two together before adding anything else in here. Next, I'm adding one cup of sugar and I'm just going to cream this together. Next, you'll add one egg, make sure your egg is room temperature, and then one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Over to a separate bowl, I'm adding in two cups of washed blueberries, and I'm also going to add in there one fourth cup of flour. Go ahead and toss your blueberries in this flour and make sure they are all well covered. Go ahead and just set those aside for a minute into another large bowl. You're gonna add one and three fourths cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, and then whisk that together. To avoid over mixing, we're gonna go ahead and add half of the flour mixture in here right now and use my mixer to mix that up. But once that's combined, you will stop using your mixer and we will mix in the rest by hand. As soon as you notice all the flour has been absorbed into the mixture, stop your mixer. It's very important that you do not overmix this. This recipe can get really dense if you overmix it. Before adding the other half of our flour mixture, you will need to add half a cup of half and half. And like I said, you're gonna wanna mix this by hand now. I'm just going to mix this together until I do not see any liquid. Now go ahead and add the rest of your flour mixture in there. And like I said, gently mix it together until you no longer notice the flour.
Now finally you can add in your blueberries. Go ahead and add all of those in there and just by hand you're going to gently fold those in. Over to a small square baking dish. I believe this one is an eight by eight. I'm going to go ahead and add all of this in there and then smooth it out so it's flat in the dish. Right before you put this in the oven, after smoothing it out in your dish, you will sprinkle on one tablespoon of sugar. Try to make sure it's spread all across the top. This will bake in your oven for about 40 to 50 minutes. I start checking mine at the 40 minute mark, but it's more like 45 to 47 minutes usually. I then check it with a toothpick in the center to make sure it comes out clean. And then I let it cool in the pan for about 10 to 15 minutes before we eat it. This is what it looked like on my plate. Mine did crumble a little bit, but it's still good this way. If you do not like blueberries like me, this is so, so good. I like blueberries and this kind of stuff, but definitely not just by themselves. If you let them cool down, they will cut out in nice bars just like this. And then I just bag them up separately and we eat on them throughout the week. Last but not least, we're making some biscuit breakfast bowls. I started by preheating my oven to 350 degrees and then over to a cupcake pan that I tipped upside down, you will start adding your canned biscuits over top of the cups. The canned biscuits only come with eight so you're only going to have eight of these so try to spread them apart as best as you can. Usually there's two that just have to go wherever they can fit and make sure when you push these down the sides that if you tear any holes in them you pinch them together really tight. These will go in your oven for about 12 to 15 minutes until they are nice and golden brown. Next we're going to move on to our hash browns. I'm adding some oil in here and I only had a little bit of these left so I just decided to use these up. You can also use potato O'Brien's or you could even make your own homemade breakfast potatoes. I'm just going to cook these up in here with a little bit of salt, pepper, and paprika. I did not measure my seasonings because I didn't exactly know how much hash browns I actually had in the bag, so I just seasoned them a little, that way they wouldn't be bland. I have to admit I'm not the best hash brown maker, I always struggle with these, getting them crispy enough. But anyways, we're going to move on to our bacon, I'm cooking up some bacon, this is just going to be a side to our bowls. This is what your little biscuit bowls will look like coming out of the oven, I let them cool down before touching them because they will be hot of course. The insides do get a little bit more brown, but they are nowhere near burnt, so don't worry about that. And as you can see, these ones kind of are touching, but they do pull apart just fine, and you can still use them as bowls. At this point, my hash browns were nice and crispy, so I went ahead and just moved those aside so we could go ahead and get started on the sausage gravy. I'm using one pound of this Jimmy Dean regular breakfast sausage. I do like to cook this in a cast iron skillet, it's just my favorite way to do it, plus I had no other pans clean at this point. If you cook breakfast a lot, then you know, you dirty a lot of dishes when you cook breakfast. Once I got that broke up in the pan, I went ahead and moved on to my eggs. I did go ahead and use the same skillet I used for my hash browns, I just removed those over to a bowl. I'm cooking up five eggs, I added about a fourth cup of milk in there, and then I'm just sprinkling that with a little bit of salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Again, this is one of those things I never really measure the seasonings with. This is just how I make my eggs, and I cook them low and slow, stirring them every once in a while. Once my sausage is cooked all the way through, we're gonna get started on the gravy. I'm adding in two tablespoons of unsalted butter in here. I'm going to let this melt down before adding in about a fourth cup of flour. Mm -hmm. 
After adding the flour, I'm also going to add in a little bit of pepper and garlic powder, just a little bit of garlic powder. Don't go overboard there. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this together until I notice that the flour has absorbed all of the grease in there. And I'm gonna let the flour cook for a minute or two. You'll start to notice that the flour starts to brown slightly. Then that's when I start adding in my milk. Don't forget about your eggs if you're still cooking your eggs like me. I do stir them every once in a while. Now I'm adding in one cup of half and half. You can use milk, but I have half and half on hand, so that's what I'm using. I add one cup of that in there and I mix it around until I notice it start to thicken up. At that point, I will add in my next cup of half and half and just repeat that again. Once I start seeing it thicken up, I will add in one more cup. So for me, I'm adding in about three cups total of half and half. Now we're gonna go ahead and give it a little taste and just see what seasonings it needs. You may have to add more seasonings like me. I usually always do since I don't measure exactly out how much I need. And at this point I will also add salt. Here's what my sausage gravy looked like after it thickened up and now we're gonna start building our bowls. To the bottom I'm adding a little bit of hash browns then my eggs, and then next I'm adding a big scoop of my sausage gravy on there, and then you will just top it with a little bit of shredded cheese. I just like to use mild cheddar. This is what my finished plate looked like. These little bowls are super filling. They are so cute, I absolutely love them. And like I said, I just decided to cook some bacon along with mine since I already had some bacon open. And if you don't want to cook all this breakfast food, you can also just make sausage and gravy and just have sausage and gravy bowls. Leave me a little flower in the comments if you made it all the way to the end of this video. I'd love to know what you think of this video. Also, if you have any tips on cooking hash browns, I would love to know about those. And I will see you guys back here on Sunday with a new video. Bye!